Chapter 50 The Excellence of Christ Manuscript 10, 1889 I am much surprised that I am as well as I am. I had great fear that my summer's work would enfeeble me for the winter. But to the praise of God I will say He has mercifully lifted me up above my infirmities. I am very much better than for many months, better than last year. We are having most excellent meetings. The spirit that was in the meeting at Minneapolis is not here. All moves off in harmony. There is a large attendance of delegates. Our five o'clock morning meeting is well attended, and the meeting's good. All the testimonies to which I have listened have been of an elevating character. They say that the past year has been the best of their life. The light shining forth from the Word of God has been clear and distinct. Justification by faith, Christ our righteousness, the experiences have been very interesting. I have attended all but two morning meetings. At eight o'clock, Brother Jones speaks upon the subject of justification by faith, and great interest is manifested. There is a growth in faith and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There are quite a number who have not had an opportunity to hear upon this subject before, but they are taking it in and are being fed with large morsels from the Lord's table. The universal testimony from those who have spoken has been that this message of light and truth which has come to our people is just the truth for this time. And wherever they go among the churches, light and relief and the blessing of God is sure to come. We have a feast of fat things, and when we see souls grasping the light, we are rejoiced, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Christ is the great pattern. His character must be our character. All excellence is in Him. Turning from man and every other model, with open face we behold Jesus in all His glory, and their minds are filled with the grand and overpowering ideas of His excellency, Every other object sinks into insignificance, and every part of moral discipline is lost which does not promote their likeness to his image. I see heights and depths that we may reach accepting every ray of light and going forward to a greater light. The end is near, and God forbid that we shall be asleep at this time. I am so thankful to see with our ministering brethren a disposition to search the Scriptures for themselves. There has been a very great lack of deep searching of the Scriptures, storing the mind with the gems of truth. How much we all lose because we do not put to the tax our minds to search with much prayer for divine enlightenment to understand His Holy Word. I believe there will be a decided advance among our people a more earnest endeavor to keep pace with the third angel's message. We may expect at any time new and startling claims from Satan through his agents. And shall not the people of God be wide awake? Shall they not become strong in the strength of the Mighty One? Wise in the wisdom of God? A crisis has arrived in the government of God in which something great and decisive must be done. The delay will not be prolonged long. The wrath of God will not be long withheld. Justice is only to speak the word, and in a moment what confusion there will be. Voices and thunderings, and lightnings and earthquakes, and universal desolation. Now is our time to be good and to do good, while with wide-awake senses we watch every movement in the government of God with apprehension. But if our life and character is after the divine model, we shall be hid with Christ in God. The world is full of evidences of God's love for fallen man. How much He loved us, we can never with our finite minds measure. We have no line with which to fathom, no standard with which to compare it. But with John, we may say, He so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that through Christ he might confer on us everlasting life. This subject fills my mind, and it is so grand, so elevating, that I am entranced as I think of it. This is a conference where advancement will be made, but oh, the want of workers! How my heart aches as I think of it! Calls for help come from every quarter. The Macedonian cry is coming in, Come over and help us! 
we need to offer up most earnest prayer that the Lord will send laborers into his vineyard. He can himself make a selection in his divine wisdom that will put our wisdom in the shade, but whatever God does, we want to accept willingly. It is a solemn time. We are trying to the best of our ability to impress the people with the weight of their responsibility. Oh, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come upon the workers that they may represent Jesus Christ in all their labors. Oh, why is there so great weakness now when we need strength and power to save souls that are perishing around us? There is a world to be reached, a world to be tested, and who shall be able to stand? We have had very pleasant weather here since the meeting. It has been very mild today. We could not have had a more favorable time for the conference. The popular doctrines of this age cannot correctly represent Jesus. Our Savior represented the Father. He rolled away the thick darkness from the throne of God, the hellish shadow which Satan had cast to hide God from sight and from knowledge. Christ reveals the throne of God and reveals to the world the Father as light and love. His clothing His divinity with humanity brings that love and clear evidence of light that humanity can comprehend it that will indict the petition in the heart to pray as did Moses, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Remember the ear of the Lord is open to our prayers. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Then why not take God at his word? Why not believe with all the heart and mind and soul? Why not by faith take hold of the divine nature? It is our privilege. All things shall be done for him that believeth. I am so grateful this morning that I have a living Savior. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. How can we dishonor God more decidedly than to distrust Him? We must never be discouraged. We must be patient kind, we must by faith be receiving that abundant supply as God is willing to bestow, and wait by faith on the Lord, believing He will do the things we ask Him. This waiting on the Lord by faith needs to be cultivated, for it leads to great spiritual grace, and renews our strength as the eagles. He shall mount up with wings, that is, by faith. God help us, is my prayer. We must rise higher and nearer to heaven in our aspirations. Seek things that are above. We must rise from the lowlands of earth to a higher power, lovelier light. We must love higher and live higher. No Christian reaches the highest point of attainment that overloads himself with worries about this world or in carrying his pet sins along with him. We can and should breathe a purer atmosphere and taste more heavenly joys. We need Jesus every day, and with His strength we may gain strength. Yes, grow in grace for heavier conflicts and obtain inspiring views of heavenly things. The pierced hand of our Divine Master holds the signal for us to come up higher. This one thing I do, forgetting these things which are behind and reaching forth unto those which are before— I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, that we might arise and shine, for our light has come, and the glory of the Lord hath arisen upon us. The more closely we copy the pattern, the more wisdom and intelligence we will have of His matchless loveliness. I have just returned from five o'clock morning meeting. The spirit of supplication was imparted to us for a larger blessing and that the men in responsible positions might have the presence and the power of God. Many are sick, compassed with infirmities, and God will lift them up as He has lifted me. He has given me health and strength and grace, and He will give the same to all His workers. Oh, that every one in responsible positions of trust in our institutions may know that Jesus is to them a present help in every time of need. They want to be drawn up from themselves nearer to God, that they may comfort others with that consolation wherewith they are comforted. We want to get such views 
of the wondrous love of God in sending His Son into the world to die for sinners, that the heart is broken at the glory of the cross uplifted. The hearts are melted. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me praise His holy name. May the Lord by His grace bless you, my sister, abundantly, is my prayer.